Hi, this is the carbon coder we're going to use at JMU to code our thin sections or thin, thick sections or samples for things like the scanning electron microscope. Let me go over the parts of the carbon coder here. And we can talk about more about uh, each part in detail. So you'll see there's two gas canisters over here. Um, the only gas canister we'll use for carbon coating is nitrogen gas, which is the one in the front. You can double check by reading it. Um, there's also a container of argon, but we don't need that for carbon coating. As for uh, only for gold coating, which is the other type this instrument does. Okay. So I have the top open here right now. You can see um, there's cables coming in. Uh, these are two sort of gaskets or openings that have attachments. So this one here on the left is for carbon coating. It's what's going to hold the carbon thread, uh, which I will show you that is going to be vaporized so that we can deposit the carbon onto our sample. This is for uh, gold coating, so we won't use it here. Um, this instrument, um, when it's in operation, is under vacuum. And so uh, right now I can read here on the little instrumentation screen that says it's at room pressure so I can open and close the sample uh, container, but if it's under vacuum, we can't do that. Um, so I'll open this up, and there's a door there with a latch and O-rings. Okay, so we're going to try to keep the O-rings clean um, as much as possible to uh, make it easier to pop down the vacuum. And hopefully you can see a light on there. There's a stage where we're going to put our samples. And in this case, the stage will tilt this way, and the carbon vapor will be deposited from this direction. Okay. So uh, that's the general layout of this instrument. And then you can look at some individual parts in more detail. So these are the gas canisters. I just wanted to show you, um, to turn on the gas canister, you will first open the main valve here. Okay, so lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. So to open it, I'm going to turn to the left, so counterclockwise. The pressure will come on. And then this is a regulator that's going to step down the pressure to a certain amount. That's why it says don't touch, because we set it correctly. And then to open this to be, um, able for the instrument to get to, I'm going to open this one, it has a little open arrow. Okay, so this is how we're going to turn it on before we start the instrument. This is the place where we're going to put the carbon thread. You'll notice I'm wearing gloves now to protect the samples and the instrument from my hands. So to release this, uh, first of all, actually, you want to keep those tight and then I will remove the clamps by holding the black uh, kind of clips here and pulling out these two connections. And then I have two screws that keep this in here. So I'm going to unscrew these. And then this should lift out like this. And you should be able to see here Right, holding it at an angle, uh, that there are carbon threads that are basically strung between sort of um, metal, I don't know what we call them, metal knobs, um, and these screw in. Okay, So every time we do this, we're going to thread this and um, tighten it down so that when we put this back in, the electrical current will run through it, and it'll run through one thread at a time. Right? So uh, the thing will vaporize one thread at a time until it's all done. Uh, you may also be able to see here, I don't know how well this is focusing, but we can also basically double thread it, meaning we put two threads okay, on each segment, and this allows it to last twice as long. So we'll show how to do that in a minute. OK, I'm going to do a double threaded uh, setup so I can get two carbon coats out of it. Um, I'm going to measure. So this is the 
carbon thread. It should be sitting right here. It comes in a little blue packet like this. All right, so I'm going to open this up. I'm going to measure 40 centimeters. Okay, so it is actually pretty exact. So I'm going to take this and cut 40 centimeters. With a little scissors. Wearing gloves. And then that's all I need of this so I can put this back. Um, I'm going to double this thread. Right, so I'm going to put the two ends together and I'm going to put it like this. All right, and then I'm going to use this to replace the threads on here. To take the existing threads off, because these have been completely used by the last user, um, I have the special screwdriver here. Again, it should be sitting right next to the carbon coder. I'm going to find this. I'm just going to turn, see I'm holding the end, I'm going to turn one or two turns just to loosen it up. So I don't need to take the whole thing apart, just turn it a little bit. Every single one of these screws. And then the carbon thread should come out. We used carbon thread. You can see it's all broken because it has been vaporized. Right, so I remove this and throw it away. Um, and then there's also a little paintbrush here to get rid of all the extra fibers or fuzz that might be created from that. All right, then I'm ready to thread this. So I'm going to take the looped end here and I'm going to basically lasso the first lead here and I'm going to make sure, so on this part the thread will be exposed, but on the two sides here it will fit into the gap between the top and the bottom plate. So once I have that on both sides, drop it, then I hold it again until I can I don't want to use too much on this side to hold it because I need to have enough to go all the way around all the leads, right? So, but I'm going to just kind of push them in there. I don't want to pull too hard, but I need to pull it somewhat taut, okay? And then I'm going to screw this one down, okay? And then I'm just going to keep going in each case, trying to make sure that the thread is secure in each lead and then tightening it down. So one at a time. You can see I'm pulling it towards the next one every time to make it go in the right direction. Like this. And it's okay to take your time for this. All right, so again, I'm kind of finger tightening it. You want it tight enough to where it's secure, but not so tight you can't ever get it off again. And then we're going to cut the ends here very close, as close as we can, and then it should be ready to go. Like that. And I'm going to brush again if I think I've made any fibers, which looks like I did. I'm going to brush the excess fibers away. To replace this, you'll notice that there is a little pin and then two holes for the screws. Uh, the pin is actually here, the pin hole right here. There's only way this, one way that this can go into the instrument correctly. So I'm going to put it back in there and then it locks down because the pin goes into the hole. And I'm going to very carefully tighten these screws. We do want them, you don't want to tighten them so hard that no one can ever get it off again, but we do want it fairly tight because this is part of what creates the vacuum in the inside of the instrument. All right, so we want this to definitely be tightened down. And then these two leads, there's only one way, again, that each of these can go because of the shape. So we just want to make sure that we're matching the shape and then we want to push down hard enough so that it clicks. Hopefully you can hear that. Click, okay. So then that would be ready to go after we uh, threaded it. The sample holders are in the drawer below the instrument. You want to find the ones, uh, if you're going to do thin sections, the ones that we've used before for carbon coating. And you can tell because they have carbon coat on them. Um, this. So um, this has a little pin so it fits into 
the SCM, it also fits into this sample holder right here like that. Okay, so we're going to just put our thin section into this area and there's two little clips that we can use to basically hold it down. Right, so they're little, um, you can use a screwdriver to tighten these two clips if you need to, but they're just meant to hold it steady so that it doesn't move because we're going to take this and we're going to put this into the instrument here, the carbon coder, and turn the light on and this will fit right just like this. Here's the sample holder for thin sections. I already discussed how you can clip this down these little clips here. And then we're going to place this onto the stage. You want to get it as far in as you can and remember which direction you put it in because we'll do it once oriented this way. It'll rotate, the whole stage will kind of tilt during the carbon coating, but then when you're done you're going to take it out and turn it 180 degrees, okay, and then do the carbon coating again. And that's because the carbon coater actually coats more heavily in the center of the circular stage than the outside. So to get an even coat over such a large sample, we need to do it twice and rotate the sample. You can pull them in and out like this, they fit with these little pens. So I just want to show you here, this is the screen for the carbon coder. Um, we can go to the home and it'll show this. Uh, we're going to do carbon thread, so we want to push carbon thread. And we get this program called Pulse Double 160 Angstroms. That is just the setting that we're going to use twice okay, um, on our samples to coat, coat them. Um, so you can see here at the top it says pump and vent. Vent is to um, bring the pressure back up inside the sample. Um, compartment so that you can open it and then pumping is to reduce the to increase the vacuum so that to reduce the pressure and this is the pressure in millibars um, so to make this start I push pump and you're gonna hear first that pump okay which is the roughing pump and then it needs to get down far enough in pressure and then another pump called a turbo pump will start and it sounds kind of like a little jet engine taking off. Let's see if we can get it to do this. So I'm holding the door in case, you can see my fingers, I'm holding the door closed um, in case that O-ring is not very good. Sometimes you need to push on the door a little bit to make the vacuum kind of stick. Hopefully you can see that the pressure is going down here. And soon we should have the turbo pump coming on. So that's the sound of the turbo pump. And then you have to just wait a long time, <laughs> especially the first time you pump it down. Um, it needs to be pretty low. Um, in fact, ideally it's somewhere around two times 10 to the negative five millibars. So it's like one right now. All right, so it's gonna take a while to pump this down. You have to be patient and then when you're ready to start, when the pressure is down to where it should be, there's a little start button here. I don't think it'll let you carbon coat unless the pressure is low enough, um, but please just be careful. Uh, don't try to carbon coat when the pressure is too high. It needs the vacuum to make the carbon coat the correct consistency, otherwise you might just get blobs of carbon all over your sample and then it's really hard to get off. Alright, so you're going to wait for that and then you just push start and then it will actually 
uh, make little arcs um, so you can see it kind of sputtering as you go. Um, and it'll also show on the screen down here its progress as it's testing the different carbon threads and then uh, vaporizing each in turn.